In the beginning, God made the universe, the heavenly realm and the planet Earth. God was there, and it was good. God made the human race, Adam and Eve, the first humans. God dwelled with them in the Garden of Eden. God was there. He was present in that place, and it was therefore good. Then Adam and Eve sinned against God, and all of the earth and the universe became broken, and death entered the world. And God was no longer entirely present. He was not there, and it was not good. Everything suffered as a result of sin entering the world. Sin became the great barrier between God and man, and God was not there. Yet, God called a nation from one man named Abraham to become Israel, a nation where God would dwell. God dwelled in the tent of meeting with Moses on the way to the promised land. You remember they're traveling through the wilderness in the desert, and Moses was leading the nation of Israel. Is anyone listening to me right now? Anyone in this room? Can yes. anyone hear my voice? Yes. The nation of Israel was traveling through the wilderness, being led by who? Wrong. Moses. And they were meeting with God where? I literally just said it. The tent of meeting. On the way where? Where were they going? Promised land. Then they made it to the promised land, led by Joshua. And then, after the time of David, Solomon built the temple, and God dwelled in the temple, and it was good. He was in a place called the Holy of Holies, and God dwelled there, and he was with Israel. Yet, Israel still rebelled against God, and followed after other gods, they, they worshiped idols. Thus, the nation went into slavery in Babylon, in the northern part of the country to slavery in Assyria. Yes, God was with them even when they were in slavery. And so there was still hope. During the captivity in Babylon, during the 25th year of it, a prophet named Ezekiel served in the remnants of Jerusalem, a city that had been completely destroyed by Babylon, and the temple itself had been burned to the ground. Burned to the ground. So all that was left of Israel was burnt ruins and a few a thousand people. And Ezekiel was the prophet then, speaking the truth boldly to the few people that remained. Ezekiel prophesied that one day the Jews would return to Israel, to Jerusalem, and they would rebuild the city, rebuild the walls, and rebuild the temple. And in that place, which is described in detail in Ezekiel, it would be a place where Jehovah Shema. The place where Jehovah Shema. Jehovah Shema, our last name of God, and our Names of God series, Jehovah Shema means the Lord is there. The Lord is there. This is the last name of God that occurs in the Old Testament. And it's an indication of the goal, the future, the hope that God would dwell among us personally. But there was something more indicated in the prophecy of Ezekiel. He was saying that Israel would return from Babylon, yes. But it also pointed to the earthly reign of a Messiah who would rule over the entire earth from the city of Jerusalem. A millennial reign of 1,000 years. 
a millennial reign of 1,000 years. Have you ever heard of the millennial reign of Christ? That occurs after the Great Tribulation. Jesus returns to earth, defeats the false prophet and the Antichrist, and Satan is bound for a 1,000 years. The false prophet and the Antichrist are cast into the lake of fire, and Jesus rules the earth from Jerusalem for a 1,000 years. It's called the Iron Rod Reign, the Iron Reign of Jesus on the earth. This is before the New Jerusalem, though. Because after, at the end of the thousand years, Satan is released one more time to tempt the nations. Interesting, isn't it? So Ezekiel is even pointing us forward in his prophecy to the millennial reign of Christ. But even more, it talks about the coming of a new heavens and new earth where humanity and God would dwell together forever in peace. Jehovah Shema, God is there. That is the perfect way to end the names of God in the Old Testament. The names of God compounded with Jehovah reveal him as providing redemption for fallen sinful man and depicting every aspect of that great transaction of redemption by which man is fully restored to God. Healing, victory, peace, sanctification, justification, preservation, care, and guidance. It's a quote from Nathan Stone in his Names of God book. Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Jehovah Rapha, our healer. Jehovah Nisi, our banner. Jehovah Mkadesh, our sanctification. Jehovah Shalom, our peace. Jehovah Sekenu, our righteousness. Jehovah Rohi, our shepherd. And Jehovah Shema is present to us. Those are the names of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Get a little bit of that, <laughs> that fire in there, you know? Then there was another. There was another beginning. In the book of Genesis, it said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, right? But then it says in the book of John, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was in the beginning with God. Through Him, all things were made, and all life was made, and that life of Jesus brought light to all mankind. A son of man came, named Jesus of Nazareth, and God was there in human form, and it was very good. Jesus the Messiah lived a life of perfection, healing the sick and hurting, teaching in parables, discipling his disciples, and then offering up his life freely on a cross, pouring out his blood to be a blood sacrifice to pay off your sins. Paid in full. Jesus' blood poured out like a river of blood for the nasty little things you did. Things you did when you lied, when you fornicated, when you did drugs, when you drank down alcohol and got drunk. Jesus says, I'll take the payment for that. Those nasty things I did and you did. That's a big deal. That's some nasty, disgusting stuff that Jesus said, put it on me with his own blood slaughtered for our sins. Thank you, Jesus, because I deserved hell. I did. On Judgment Day, when, it, without Jesus, if God was reading off my sins, he said, I'm going to send you to hell for these things, I would say, amen. Amen. I, yeah. Seriously. I guarantee you. If you end up on Judgment Day before Jesus, and you don't have Christ, and he reads off your sins and says, I think it's okay if I send you to hell for this, you'll, you'll say, yeah, that's fair. You'll, you'll realize in that moment that's how bad sin is. Yeah. But if you come before Jesus on that day with Jesus as your Savior, and God says, it says here that Jesus paid off your sins. Is that correct to say, yeah, that's true. He did in full. All of it. All, every single one. And then God will say, well, that, that means you get to come to heaven. And you'll say, amen. Yes. Yeah. 
and it'll be right. It'll be 100% right because someone paid it off for you. Someone took the penalty for you. Jesus did. That's the truth. Jesus died and then rose from the grave three days later then to demonstrate to us that after we die, if we believe in him, he will raise us to eternal life. In fact, Jesus is alive right now. Right now. Jesus is alive right now. Did you know that? Obviously, he's alive right now. Because I'm alive right now. He is the Savior. And he will return again to rule and reign on the earth for 1,000 years from the city of Jerusalem. We call this the millennial reign like we talked about. And the prophet spoke about this. Ezekiel spoke about it. And he would rule and reign and put everything under his control. Yet it would all begin with the spread of the church across the face of the earth. And the church would be the body of Christ. And in the body of a single believer, you and me, God's presence would dwell. And within you, Jehovah Shema. In you, Jehovah Shema. God is there. Right now, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, a blood-washed, born-again saint, Jehovah Shema. In you, Jehovah Shema. Jehovah Shema in you right now. God is there in you. You're his temple, your body, your soul, your spirit, your being is Jehovah Shema. God is there in you. Hallelujah. It would all begin there. With Jesus putting his Holy Spirit in us as believers, we become God's temple. God's temple had been the Garden of Eden. Then men fell. God's temple became the tent of meeting with Moses. God's temple then became the temple built by Solomon where God dwelled. God's temple was then Jesus Christ, the God-man come to earth. Now today, God's temple is the human body, the human soul, the human spirit. God dwells within his church on earth in the hearts and the minds of people surrendered to his will. Amen? We call these people Christians. God is there in them, and he is here now, and it is very good. But today it's still through a mirror dimly. We aren't in the full presence of God on this fallen earth. Only after the rapture, the tribulation, the return of Jesus, and after the millennial reign will everything be made perfect, a new heavens, an entirely new planet, a new earth, remade where God is there, Jehovah Shema. And if you're not a Christian today, if you don't know Jesus, you can know him right now. You can give your life to God and say, Lord, I want you to be in me. So, Lord Jesus Christ, I give you my life. Wash away my sins. I repent in the name of Jesus. Come in within me. Make me new. Make me born again. That offer is open to literally any human who is breathing. It's open to you. You can say yes to that and say, Jesus, Fill me, make me yours. I want to have God in me. The hope of glory. In the book of Revelation, our future is described like this in Revelation 21, 1 through 4. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her, her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning, or crying, or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. And it continues in Revelation 22, 1 through 5, Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, down the middle of the street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, 
and his servants will serve him, and they will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. That is the goal, to be with God in perfection. Jehovah Shema, God is there. No temple, no place to go, but God perfectly present with us permanently forever. And at last, everything is finally okay and right once again. Jehovah Shema from Ezekiel 48, 35. And the name of the city from that time on will be Jehovah Shema, the Lord is there. The last verse of the book of Ezekiel. Forever, Maranatha. Amen. So, praise God. It's true. <clears throat> the, the Holy Spirit just tapped on my shoulder about 20 minutes ago to, to, to just pray right now. You can give your life to Jesus Christ afresh right now, but we're also going to repent. We're going to repent on behalf of uh, all of us here. Anything that we need to repent of in our lives. Is there something, some sin you've committed recently? Let's all repent right now. And turn again to Jesus Christ. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, God Almighty, whether we're Christians or we're not, we're coming before you right now, and we're repenting. Dear Heavenly Father, we bow down before you, crying out to you, God, for mercy. Heavenly Father, right now there's believers in here who need to repent. There's believers in here right now, and we repent right now. We repent of pride. Forgive us, Lord Jesus, for pride. We repent of pride, and we stay humble. Father God, forgive us for, for stealing. There's people in here who have stolen. We repent of that in the name of Jesus. Stealing is wrong, God. Convict us of these things, Father. Forgive us, Lord, for lying. We ask for your forgiveness once again, Lord Jesus. Cleanse us again by your blood. We repent of lying in the name of Jesus. There's people in here who are lacking faith, God. Forgive us for faithlessness. In the name of Jesus, we repent. Forgive us anew, Lord Jesus, for drinking, fornicating, lust, evil thoughts, God, hateful thoughts toward others. Please forgive us, Jesus, we repent. Lord, we cast aside our sins. We throw them at the foot of the cross. Lord Jesus, please wash away our sins. We turn our back on those sins, God. We reject them in the name of Jesus Christ. We believe, Lord Jesus, that you lived a perfect life, that you did not sin even once, and so you were a perfect sacrifice, a perfect offering for our sins. We believe, Lord Jesus, that you died for our sins to wash them away with your own precious blood. So we repent of those sins, Knowing that you hate sin, we repent of those sins in the name of Jesus. Please forgive us, Jesus. Forgive us, Jesus. Forgive us, Jesus, for every one of those sins. We repent of them all now in the name of Jesus. Your blood is enough, Lord Jesus. We turn to you, God. Make us born again. We died with you, crucified with you, and we are born again of the Holy Spirit. We receive your Holy Spirit, God. Help us to walk that out every day, God, living for you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. We love you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen.